Hi, I'm Ellie and welcome to my 2007 Toyota Hiace I have called Arcadia, which I've spent the past few months self-converting into a camper van for traveling in. And while I've been doing this, I've been thinking about what life will be like as a solo traveler and investigating the option of getting a pet to keep me company. So this video is going to be a compilation of my research on pets and their suitability for van life, as well as the conclusion that I've come to. I'm Ellie Wilder and you're watching Wilder in Motion. The main reason people get pets for van life is the same reason that people get pets in general, which is they can provide great companionship, which is especially important for solo travelers to combat loneliness and have some stability when traveling alone. Having a pet while living in a van, of course, has all the same responsibilities as having a pet normally and more. Each country has their own importation requirements for what animals they'll let in and what vaccines and quarantine they'll need to go through. So it's very important to research your intended destinations if you're planning on leaving the country before committing to a pet. Another universal requirement for having a pet as a van lifer is you'll need a way to control the temperature in the van even when you're not there to make sure your pet doesn't get too hot or cold. So let's start with by far the most popular van life pet and pet in general, which is a dog. And it's no secret that they provide so much love and great companionship. They're also great adventurers. They can come hiking and swimming with you and they're the most likely to be tolerated in public spaces. Dogs frequently live beyond 15 years, which means you'll have lots of time with your bestie, but also you'll need to factor them into your long-term life. Life plan. When traveling you'll be spending a lot of time with your dog if you have one. If you then return to full-time work after six months or a couple of years your dog might experience separation anxiety from the sudden change. A dog can only be left by themselves in the van for a short amount of time for their own welfare and of course they'll need to be let out to go to the bathroom. So this makes long day activities like scuba diving, day trips and tours, concerts, nights out, amusement parks and all those other events that go for many many hours a bit difficult for someone who owns a dog in van life and this is a whole other consideration to factor in. Owning a dog won't only affect what you do, it will also affect where you go. You'll need to factor in staying at pet friendly campgrounds and visiting dog beaches and other dog friendly places where your dog is able to get out of the van and go for walks and adventures with you. You'll also need to factor in where your dog will sleep and eat and also the costs associated with dog ownership, including any vaccines you may need if the dog is crossing the border. Sometimes there are also importation fees and it's advisable to get a pet cam so that you can check on them if you're popping out of the van for a little bit and leaving them by themselves. Next up is cats and they're smaller so they require less space than dogs. Plus they're happy to be alone for longer periods of time and you can have an indoor litter tray for them. Now a lot of people let their cats roam during the day but this wouldn't really work for a traveling van lifer as their cat wouldn't know where to find them so I can only really see this working for someone like a city stealth van dweller who stays in one place all the time as a lifestyle decision so essentially their van is like a studio apartment and their cat always knows the same place to come back to but a GPS collar is always advisable so that you know where to find them. Next up is rats, which may seem a little bit random because they're not the first thing that comes to mind for most people when they think of a domestic pet, but they have been described as having dog-like qualities. They recognize and bond with their owners and they can be taught to do tricks. They're very social, so they must be kept in pairs at least or small groups. But of course, the more rats, the bigger the cage. And they will need a dedicated cage space in the van. However, if you're a solo traveler, you may have a little bit of extra room to spare. They are most active at dawn and dusk, which is the perfect opportunity to give them their needed at least one hour of out of cage time per day, which means that the van will need to be rat proof with no little spots that they can sneak outside of. The fact that they are active during these somewhat unusual hours might make it a bit difficult if you're a light sleeper as they'll be so near to you, you will be able to hear them. It's really important that rats are kept cool at about 10 to 13 degrees Celsius so they're not suitable for hot regions and they live for about two years. 
I will briefly touch on another rodent, which is the hamster, as they are illegal in some areas, but generally they are a solitary animal that just have to be kept by themselves. So I do question how much companionship they would provide, but they are another small pet that can be kept in a cage set up in a van, but I haven't investigated this one so much as they are illegal in Australia. And finally, a snake. Now I feel like I have to talk about this one because Janelle Eliana, aka Van Girl, has one. Now snakes are a specialised pet with specialised needs, so it does take a fair amount of expertise to keep one. Non-aggressive varieties are available, but I don't think I could sleep in the same room as one. <laughs> they are relatively clean, quiet, and low maintenance compared to other pets, and they do just take up the size of their tank space, but they will need a dedicated heat lamp, so you'll need a reliable source of electricity. The bigger the snake, the bigger the size of the tank, and this is probably why Janelle just has a little snake. So I guess the real question is, would a snake give you the companionship that you're craving? Well, one thing's for sure is that pets are a huge commitment under any circumstance and being a van lifer just adds another layer of complexities to it. But if you really love your pet and you put in all the effort and plan your life around them, it is possible to make it work, but you really need to be willing to put in that time, money and commitment. For me, rats appeal the most because they take up not too much space. I like that they will be keeping each other company and also that they provide the dog-like companionship. It's just those cute little TikToks of them doing tricks have gotten me sold. However, I do live in Australia, so it's a bit too hot to keep them in the van, unfortunately. But maybe one day I hope to van life overseas and we will reconsider then. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to check out my other van life content, I will leave a link below in the description. I am very excited to have my complete van tour coming in the next couple of weeks, so if you don't want to miss that, be sure to like, subscribe, I'll see you next time.